He speaks the truth. These are indeed the living waters. Dinjarin, you are redeemed. This is the way. This is the way. Now, hold your horses. Let's just get something straight. So it's okay for two episodes of the Book of Boba Fett to be dominated by irrelevant content to his story, but the second that the Mandalorian tries to do anything remotely intelligent and thought-provoking that deviates from his narrative arc, it's a fucking travesty. It's all part of one universe, people. You're gonna have some overlaps. Except what you get sometimes and just think, we could have had no Mando at all in this. He's out of line, but he's right. I've seen a few criticisms thrown towards this week's instalment simply because it became too political in the sense that it was about the state of the New Republic, and the direction for much of the Empire's former forces going forward and seeing what I believe is the beginnings of the First Order right under their noses. This was a narratively driven, engaging, nuanced and thoughtful addition to the show that had shaky acting but, in retrospect, was intentional, and provides a lot of thematic subtext going forward as this series is steadily ascending the staircase of doom towards the sequel trilogy. Now, this episode is clearly split into two halves. One side of it focused on Din and Bo as they recover from the ordeal of the groundbreaking discovery that ended last week's episode, and what their journey becomes next. Then, and in my opinion, the most fascinating part of this episode, exploring the state of the New Republic. Focusing on its privileged view of life in the galaxy now, the supposedly forward-thinking and non-oppressive practices being undertaken to support the former Imperial forces, and how the First Order could have potentially grown beneath their feet. Before I get ahead of myself, let's examine Bo and Din's story first, shall we? We've seen from Mando what relinquishing the title of apostate means to him, and how his life would have never been the same again if he couldn't become part of the way once more. But the crucial element to this that could really shift the plot forward is the subtle inclusion of Bo. Cleverly seeded with everything going on in and around all of this episode, from Bo jumping into the waters, retrieving Din, losing her castle and becoming part of the Creed, she's gone through a rebirth of her own and has found new meaning and never took her helmet off. She essentially took part in the ritual that the Creed recognises without ever realising it herself, and that caught me by surprise at the end when I realised this was the case. More importantly for her though, she's found the beginnings of a new army, a new group that follow a radical mentality when it comes to their devotion to Mandalore, but a group that are devoted nonetheless, and she could utilise these men and women to reclaim her throne. The roadblock for her, however, could possibly still be Din. He is the rightful bearer of the Dark Saber and ruler currently, and if it follows the tradition of the Saber needing to be won by combat, then she'd still have to defeat him to reclaim that title. It's not uncommon for members of the Creed to fight amongst themselves, but this would be rooted in something more personal, and have greater consequences for the people of Mandalore. If Bo was to challenge Din now, it could potentially sever ties for herself and Din from the Creed. If Din were to lose, he could be rejected on the grounds of being an incompetent leader, whereas if Bo was to win, she could be left again on her own, as they wouldn't see her as a stable leader given she'd already lost Mandalore to the Empire once. This is just one possible way to do it, but there are so many possibilities to the story going forward where we could see an implosion of the remnants of Mandalore based solely on selfish ambition or defiant pragmatism. Either way, I would love to see it come down to Bo and Mando having a butt helmets over the future of Mandalore, but only time will tell. Moving on, however, to one of the biggest points of contention among the Star Wars fanbase this week is the inclusion of the returning Dr. Pershing and the insights we receive about the New Republic. A topic of which I have always had questions over since the sequels. The compelling thing I noticed throughout this, however, is some of the dialogue and character beat choices and how it resembles certain moments that we've seen from the animated spin-off The Bad Batch, and particularly from the character of Crosshair and recent developments with the clones. The first parallel comes from learning that the New Republic implemented an amnesty program that affords the opportunity for former members of the Imperial Army to repurpose themselves and contribute to society in a meaningful way beyond the war, something that the Empire claimed they would do originally 
when transitioning away from clones to conscription soldiers, and wanting to have an army of believers rather than programmed or conditioned troopers that would execute their every order. However, where this becomes an issue in the current day is for individuals like Pershing, that believe the potential for their efforts prior to this new life still have value and that it could help to serve the new republic, despite their beliefs, which he's right, it absolutely could, but the new republic would never see it that way. Something in a very loose way that almost reflects Crosshair's beliefs too in the Bad Batch, being a defective clone and likely more versatile to the Empire than most of his brothers. Upon his arrest and betrayal by Aaliyah, Pershing is put into a repurposed Mind Flayer that we saw an iteration of used on Crosshair back in Season 1 of the Bad Batch. A device that was used then to enhance his inhibitor chip to make him more compliant is instead used here to undo that potential indoctrination that they desperately want to scrub out from people like Pershing. The tactics and intended results of these measures are certainly adapted from what we saw in the Bad Batch, and the New Republic and its dignitaries recognise the Empire's shortcomings and are attempting to undo a lot of those malpractices taken with them. Like failing to offer the clones something new, whereas officers and soldiers of the Empire here are offered something new for themselves, and some of the devices like the Mind Flayer being repurposed for reconditioning. The similarity that remains here is using the number designations and stripping these men and women of any of their former identities, which in some cases could be seen as a good thing, but when you look at Pershing's interaction with the Republic dignitaries, it comes across as patronising and likely don't value their lives at all. Despite the rehabilitation centres and pomp and circumstance surrounding a lot of this, it all feels fake. You continue to look at them as numbers, how does that help to reintegrate them into society? Checks facts? It fucking won't. The New Republic has made all these strides to convince everyone that they're not going to operate like the Empire, and that that time is gone. However, much of their environments, technology, and now even their recruits are part of the remaining vestiges of the Empire. Even with good intentions and visible amendments made to the galaxy right now, there are always going to be those that don't agree with the new rules in play. I understand that this might have felt too slow, or there wasn't enough Mando in their Mandalorian show, but all the actions of this will undoubtedly influence his journey and the future of Mandalorians, especially with Bo's castle being bombed by TIE interceptors that just appeared from nowhere? A question for another time, clearly. However, all in all, this was a decent episode. It works hard on the world building and effectively conveys the state of the galaxy right now and how it's all still so uneasy following the Empire, even a little over a decade later. I enjoyed the slower pace for what it offered, but had it been any less than this, then I would have probably joined the masses that disliked it. That's gonna do it from me however, if you would like this, hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more, and until next time, take care, and may the Force be with you.